Oh, hello guys, I hope you're all doing well. If you're anything like me, you've been smashing out Apex over the last few days. Honestly, I haven't played anything as fun as this in so long, and it's so refreshing just to be able to play the game without waiting for fixes on all sorts of stuff. So, if you've seen the title to the video, you'll be aware that this is going to be a guide to getting started with Apex. It might look like an overwhelming experience at first, but just trust me, it's not as hard as it looks. Something a lot of you guys probably don't know is that I've been playing Battle Royales for a very, very long time, before Battlefield even. So I started back in Armor 2 with the first Player Unknown Battle Royale mod after seeing it on one of uh, Frankie on PC's videos, and I played it a bit in Armor 3 as well. I reached top 10 in multiple seasons on PUBG solos and squads and played Fortnite in Challenger League. Definitely not absolute top level in either of those games, but I do know a thing or two about them, so you know, I might be able to help with this one too. Anyways, weird flex over, it's time to get started with this video. So I'm going to break this video into 5 parts, those will be Legends, Dropping In, Weapons, Synergies, and then Tactics and Concepts. So we'll get started with Legends. In Apex there are 3 different types of Legends, we have Supports, Fraggers, and Trappers. When choosing a Legend you want to consider all Abilities, Synergies, and Hitbox size. Your Support Legends here are Lifeline, Pathfinder, and Gibraltar. These Legends all have Abilities that are centered around Team Play. Lifeline has a Healing Shield and a Healing Drone and a Supply Drop. Pathfinder has a Survey, Beacon and Zipline, and Gibraltar has a Bubble Shield. Out of these, both Pathfinder and Lifeline are your best choices. For regular public matches, I'd say Lifeline is the best choice here, as all their abilities are suitable for any playstyle. Pathfinder has one offensive ability, but the Survey Beacon definitely rewards more of a passive playstyle, as you can locate the next zone and set up in there. Gibraltar has a solid ultimate, but good players won't die to it, and his shield isn't good enough to warrant dealing with his massive hitbox basically handicapping him in close range fights against shotguns. Now for fraggers, we've got Bloodhound, Bangalore and Wraith. All these legends have really high mobility and offensive abilities. So Bloodhound has footstep tracking, wall hack scanning and the beast of the hunt ultimate. Bangalore has a speed boost passive when you get shot at, a smoke launcher and a rocket strike ultimate. And then Wraith has void walk, but all other abilities can be used like passively or offensively I guess, in the teleporter and the whispers. Out of these, I'd basically say that Bloodhound and Bangalore are the slightly higher tier ones, but Wraith is also really good. Bloodhound is basically a hard fragger. You can track down enemies, scan them out, and then pop your ultimate and just destroy everyone. Bangalore's passive basically allows her to have a constant speed boost in gunfights. Her smoke can be comboed with Digital Threat as well, or a Bloodhound ult to see through it. And her barrage is also pretty useful to disorient enemies, you know, deny them of area, and even does quite a bit of damage. Wraith is also just insane in the right hands, but you've got to understand offensive and defensive teleporters. You can like bait your teleporters. You've also got to manage your void walk, making sure that you don't use it in situations that you can get out of, just using it only to escape really, really bad situations, kind of like Reaper's uh, Wraith form in Overwatch. She's also really fast though, so people tend to just run her to rush everyone and get really high cool matches. Now for the trappers, you've got Caustic and Mirage. Caustic has gas traps, gas vision, and a big gas grenade for his ultimate. Mirage has a hologram for downstate, holographic decoy and vanishing act. Now Caustic is decent, but his gas traps can absolutely destroy his teammates mobility, but they affect everyone, and his hitbox is fairly large as well. Overall he's a decent choice, but I just prefer abilities that I can use actively rather than just dropping traps and then hoping for the best. Mirage is also decent, but overall I don't think he's that great. One of his abilities requires him to be downed, something you really don't want to be planning for. His hologram can also trick people, but again, it relies on the enemies not being super aware. And his ultimate is decent, but he doesn't actually go fully invisible when he goes for his vanishing act. So again, it's not just as good as it could be. Now that we've covered all the legends, let's have a look at dropping in. So the first thing that I'd recommend doing is landing at all sorts of different places and just trying to find the spot that you like, with your team of course. Once you find the zone that works for you and your team, keep landing there and become really, really good at fighting there and rotating around for those kills. This will require a full squad, but honestly, while the ping system is good, it'll help a lot to just have a dedicated squad or a group of people you always play with, or just someone in Discord anyway. Like, playing within comms is so much better than just playing with randoms every time. It's a heavy team game, so you'll want to play with a group. When actually dropping, you want to dive until about 145, then glide till about 135. Once you hit 135, then you want to dive until 145. I guess you guys get it by now, but you can see on the diagram here. Uh, you just want to keep doing this until you hit the ground to get further and lower than your opponents. There is also a circle that spawns randomly around the map when you're dropping. That's a high loot zone and it might be worth going to. I'd still recommend just dropping where you feel comfortable and where you've practiced with your team. 
you always want loot to be uncontested as fighting early can be a raffle for who gets the gun and armor. Okay, so now it's time to have a look at the weapons on offer in Apex. One of the best things to know about the game is that pretty much every weapon is viable aside from the Mozambique. They're all pretty good, however there's always going to be better guns and worse guns, so I'll try my best to put them into a tier list. So at the S tier we have the Mastiff. In my opinion, S tier means that you have to pick up the weapon and you have no choice but doing that. And honestly right now the only true S tier weapon is the Mastiff. You always have to pick it up. This bad boy will do 144 in the body and 288 in the head if you hit your shots. It also has a fire rate of 96 rounds per minute which is actually really really good for a single shot shotgun. At the A tier we have a lot of weapons. We've got the R301, R99, Hemlock, Prowler, Devotion, Spitfire, G7 Scout and Peacekeeper. Now we also must consider weapons like the Wingman and Longbow. Both absolutely top tier and they're really good. Wingman could even be S tier, but for the average player, they're not going to be that great as you're going to need to have pretty good aim to use them. We've also got to acknowledge that a lot of weapons require certain attachments to be viable. Devotion needs a turbocharger, Wingman and Longbow are significantly better with Skull Piercer, and the Prowler needs Selective Fire. And while a lot of this is based off the chart you can see on screen by Thrill Game, a lot of DPS doesn't really matter. As you get further away, fire rate matters less and less as you want to be bursting or tapping to get the most out of your gun. Weapons like the Longbow, Scout and Wingman don't have very good DPS, but they are really really good with single shot damage and they carry that out from a long distance. So despite having bad DPS, at a longer range they will be way more effective. And finally, your legend selection will also affect the type of weapons you want to find. Bangalores for example need a shotgun, SMG or pistol so that they can have the digital threat scope to see through their own smokes. Bloodhounds also need close range weapons, and preferably ones that can take down multiple enemies in one mag for rushing with their ultimate. There are plenty of other examples, but I'll let you guys figure those out and just see what you like, I guess. So then now we're going to go into synergies, which in my opinion is one of the coolest parts of Apex Legends. Synergies are combinations of things within the game that can be used better together rather than being used solo. Apex has a full set of abilities for each legend, giving potential for a lot of cool synergies, along with some stuff like the Digital Threat site, for example. Probably the most effective synergy in the game is the Bloodhounds and Bangalore smoke and ultimate tactic. Bangalore smokes directly on the enemy and Bloodhound pops his ultimate. You can also use, add a Wraith here just to add an offensive teleporter to get there even faster and surprise your enemy even more. Bangalore also has great synergy with the digital threat site which allows her to see through her own smoke. When I'm playing I'm always giving my digital threat scopes to my Bangalore as I don't really need them as a Bloodhound, I can see through the smoke with my ultimate anyway. Another decent combo is Gibraltar Bubble and Lifeline Healing Drone. If your team just got smashed in a fight or just needs to heal after finishing one off, Gibraltar can bubble and Lifeline can drone inside of the bubble for safe AoE healing. AoE meaning area of effect of course. Now there are other combinations in the game and they're also very effective but I just gave a quick offensive and a quick defensive one just to get started here. I'm sure more and more stuff will be found as the game progresses but for now these are the ones that I think are the coolest. Now for the next part, we've got tactics and concepts. This will be the part of the video where I pull a bit of my previous BR experience in. To keep this final part fairly simple and quick, I'm just going to talk about firefights and rotations here. So to start with firefights, we're playing in a squad based game. We've got a high time to kill as well, which means that 1v3ing a squad can be fairly dangerous if they're good players. So to start out, when spotting a team, always assume it's going to be a full team and alert you guys as well. If you're both in the zone within engagement distance, you should just start shooting straight away. Your teammates can get there as well, and then they can start shooting as well, but as long as they know that there's enemies around, they should be getting towards you to start engaging this other team. You always want to finish fights as quickly and decisively as you can, and you should always use ultimates if you, they'll help you to finish the fight even faster. I often have 2-3 to three, or even 5 ultimates in a single game when playing as Bloodhound, as I want to be using them every single team fight and recharging them using accelerants. If you take too long, you're at the risk of being third party as well. Third partying is when another team comes in and interferes with the fight. They're extremely common and you want to get the fight done and when finished, always be ready for another team. Prioritize heals and resurrections over loot, and once you're totally safe, go for loot. When running around, if you hear a lot of shots, that means that another team is fighting a different team. Now this gives you opportunities to become the third party. This is always the best position and you want to let other teams try to fight out a little bit and then you go in and, you know, fight them head on, but otherwise just poke damage at both teams, get their shields down really low, and once one team wins, go pounce in on them and kill them. Unless you're playing for really high kill counts, then you just want to rush both teams and just go for all the kills you can. However, if you're playing for wins, then you want to kind of let teams wear each other out, 
wear them out from long range with like a scout or a hemlock single fire or something like that. Now as far as rotations, you want to keep a few things in mind. Firstly, if you can play the edge of the zone, you'll be often really safe as you'll have the back to the zone, which is where no one's going to be, basically eliminating the possibility of getting flanked. It doesn't really matter much in Apex, however, so often you want to be running around within the safe zone going for kills. Quickly though, if you want to play passively, you should always play in the center of the zone. This will maximize the chance of the next zone falling in on you. With an aggressive playstyle, the main thing that I'd recommend is keeping an eye on your team and sticking together and using balloons. Now as a quick side note, I'd really really recommend just taking an aggressive playstyle. It's going to help you a lot since you're, everyone's like learning this game still, right? So you want to be getting into a lot of firefights and just getting into like a bunch of different situations just to get better at the game. You want to learn the different weapons, learn what you like more, and you're only going to do that by actually getting into fights, not hiding around in the center of the zone. Anyways, getting back to balloons, currently you can get much further using a simple trick. Start by holstering by hitting 3 and then take the rope up to the top and look vertically as you're about to reach it. Once you get the option to free look and you're taking off, hit the free look and then fly around using A and D. When flying, if you get close to structures, you'll get a height boost. Your boosters will activate as you see in this clip and with practice you can extend your jumps by a lot just by doing this simple little trick. You'll need to practice this a lot just to learn the optimal distance between the object and yourself so you get the boost without actually cancelling your jump which will happen if you get too close. Anyways guys, I think I've covered most of the essentials for getting into Apex. As always, if you like it, then like it, and if you dislike it, then, you know, dislike it. If you've got criticism or questions, make sure to leave in the comments, as it's far more important than uh, compliments. Anyways, that's it for now, so peace guys, take it easy.